This drug will literally send you back in time. But beware, there is a catch. The channel is nearly at 100,000 subscribers, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and help me on reaching this amazing milestone. The film opens up to a couple on a hotel bed taking a pill. Interesting way to start a film for sure. As the man goes to get ice, the woman starts to envision a forest growing in her room, and he starts to hallucinate that the elevator has turned into the open sand dunes of Egypt. This looks like the most epic drug trip ever. It's not fun anymore. Turn it off. Send him back. On the man's end, he finds himself completely engulfed in sand as he falls to the dunes. That music just set my mood for the rest of the film. I'm definitely expecting some trippy, dark experience and so far, it has my attention for sure. Next we cut to two paramedics, Dennis and Steve. I'm sorry, what hospital allows their paramedics to dress like Steve is? Is this casual Friday in the emergency ward? Once they arrive on the scene, they come across two bodies, one with a chest wound and a child who has OD'd. Steve doesn't notice the police officer behind him holding a gun on him. Show up for work dressed like Tupac. What do you expect? Okay, that's very rude and unprofessional, but he's not entirely wrong. Steve is in a sports shirt holding a needle while hovering over an unconscious child. That might be a little suspicious. Steve and Dennis get the man with the knife wound on a gurney and wheel him out. The police stay behind and try to question the remaining suspects about where they might have hid the knife that stabbed him. When one of the cops closes the door, we see what penetrated the other man. That's not a knife, that's a futuristic barbarian sword if I ever saw one. That man should should be dead. Later we cut ahead to Dennis's daughter's birthday party and Steve and Dennis are sitting off to the side enjoying the scenery. Here Dennis's wife brings the baby over to Steve and the baby immediately starts to cry. I'm not sure why, but I saw that remark coming and still laughed at it. This is when Steve walks over to Dennis's other daughter, Brianna. While he tries to connect with Brianna, some lab results come in for Steve and he agrees to come into the doctor on Tuesday. The next shift they work together, they pull up to an abandoned amusement park where they come across a body that is completely charred. As they try to talk to the officer on site about the difference between a burn victim and a dead body, he shows them the key piece of evidence. Okay, while they've mentioned that this new drug isn't necessarily illegal yet, maybe that's something they need to crack down on immediately before everyone just starts dropping like flies. Also, every victim of the drug so far has had a weapon or artifact from a far off time period appear near them. How about we collect that as evidence? Later, Steve goes in for his test with the doctor and he finds out that he has a brain tumor that's growing. While he decides to keep it quiet from Dennis, they go to another emergency call. This time, they're called to the hotel where the woman from the beginning has been bitten by a snake and is still hallucinating. They find an empty pack of Synchronic on the nightstand too. You want to help me find it? I knew I could grab that much. This is the cop you want patrolling your neighborhood. If he's this confident in finding a venomous snake on the second floor of a city hotel, you know he'll be ready to handle anything. Crazed ex-boyfriend? No problem. Escaped serial killer? No problem. Time jumping venomous snake? As Dennis and the officer go to use the elevator that the man had been in at the beginning of the film, they find what's left of him. Well, technically, he did think he was falling. Look at that smile. As Dennis and Steve take the woman to the hospital, Dennis becomes more worried about Steve, but no one talks about the tumor. When we cut over to Steve's appointment, we find out that the kind of tumor he has will not be a slowly progressing one. It's an extremely aggressive tumor that will kill him relatively quickly. And apparently, that's the good news. It's an inoperable type. Without radiation, he might only have a few weeks to live. That's just a terrible hit to find out like that. But the way Anthony Mackie shows his detachment from finding out and moving on with what's left of his life is phenomenal. Later that night, Steve and Dennis are at a strip club celebrating Steve's birthday. As Dennis tries to ask about all of the painkillers, Steve once again avoids answering the question and continues on with the night. The next shift, they answer a call where two teenagers have taken drugs, and when Steve questions the one, they find out that there's a teenager that has taken the Synchronic but is missing. It's Brianna. I honestly didn't see them using Brianna as that much of a driving character. This was an ingenious move. Soon after, Steve goes to the local smoke shop and buys up all of the inventory of Synchronic to try and get it off of the shelves. While he's returning to his car, we meet Kermani who offers to buy the drug off of him for 20 times what he paid for all of them. Steve rejects his offer and he leaves him standing there in the middle of the street. Later that night, Steve hears a bang in the middle of the night and he goes to investigate. 
Come on! Oh shit! Hey, hey come, the, come the fuck out of there, all right? He's lucky Steve is so calm and collected here. I would have been swinging at the first thing that moved. Whether it's a pair of bunny slippers or a creepy druggie, it's getting hit with the slugger. Kermani introduces himself as the chemist that created Synchronic. Steve gives Dr. Kermani until the police arrive to explain himself, and Kermani wastes no time in explaining his creation. Synchronic is the needle. That's the most simplistic, yet in-depth enough explanation to explain time travel using a drug. The idea that all phases of time are always there and we'd be able to just pop over to another point is awesome. I'm not condoning drugs, but this sounds like an awesome experience. Aside from the people dying in the past and future, of course. Dr. Kermani explains that he was actually going around to buy up all of the synchronic they had synthesized, so when Steve tells him that he flushed it all, he leaves without a fuss. On another call, Dennis believes that Steve is too messed up to to perform his work properly, so he starts to open up about not wanting to take responsibility if Steve ends up killing someone. When Steve blames Dennis for not being good enough for the people in his life, the two of them end up fighting and their driver has to come out and help Dennis lift the victim into the ambulance. As Steve sits at home contemplating what happened to Brianna, he ends up taking a dose of Synchronic. As time goes on, Steve finally starts to feel the effects of the drug. I'm sorry, if a drug makes me think bits of me are just missing like that, I'm not gonna remain calm like he does. Someone needs to put me back together. The illusion of phasing between times is very well conceived here, and you actually kind of believe that it's as seamless as it appears. As he fades back into his own existence, he sees evidence of his time travel which causes him to try and record himself going back. If I were him, I'd definitely be trying to figure out a way to control when I go back in time. This time it goes back to an ice age time, and he damn near freezes to death. Thankfully, they created an intelligent character so the next time he goes back, he makes a fire to keep warm. As he encounters an Ice Age human who enjoys the fire with him peacefully, he discovers one key thing. The past fucking sucks, man. Well said, Steve. Well said. They really did make Steve an intelligent character. He's already figured out how long he can go back in time and that different spots take him to different times. As Steve undergoes more radiation treatments, Dennis is thinking back to when Brianna was still at home. As the pressure of everything going on tears Dennis and Steve apart, Steve only has five more synchronic pills to find Brianna, and he plans to make the most of them. Identified as Dr. Patrick Kermani of Ohio, a chemist for a drug manufacturer. Well, I guess we're not going to be able to ask him for any more synchronic pills. We really are down to the wire with the last five pills. That's only 35 minutes in the entirety of history to find the exact time that Brianna is in. And that's not even guaranteeing that Brianna is in the same exact spot Steve goes back in. Steve decides to try and bring his dog, Hawking, back in time with him to test if he'll be able to bring Brianna back with physical contact. It's a success, but this time, he goes back to a time when race was an issue, so naturally, he tries to just hold out until time runs out. For some reason, he doesn't go back to his time like he's supposed to. His plan is to wait until the man in his house goes to sleep, then go back to their spot and take another pill, but when he attempts this, the man comes back out again. This man is probably so tired of waking up and finding Steve and Hawking sitting on his couch. Every time he pops out, Steve is just calmly sitting on his couch. His plan starts to work, but not before some people come to the old man's aid. Oh, no, no. Oh, when Steve realizes that he made it in one piece, he goes to check on Hawking, but Hawking isn't there with him anymore. Why is one of the most emotional moments of this film watching Hawking fade away into nothingness? As Dennis continues having flashbacks of when his life was good, he continues to show us why Steve is so jaded towards family. He lost his whole family during Hurricane Katrina and still managed to pull through just fine. The fuck back to the future. I'm really starting to feel Steve's impatience with everything. Everything always makes time travel so simple, but he's still trying to figure out the rules while running out of chances. Seeing how he only has three pills left, Steve decides it's a good time to go to Brianna's last known spot and try to find her. Once there, he falls out of a tree and comes across a group of worshippers that hold him down. Once he snags the piece of jewelry off of the leader, he runs back up the tree and comes back. Once he makes it back, one of the girls that was with Brianna comes out to smoke and tells him that that's not where Brianna was when she disappeared. Why didn't you think to say that earlier? He literally just wasted one of the last pills to almost die by some moon worshippers. Later, Steve goes to the bar and meets Dennis there, who thinks that his marriage is failing now that Brianna is gone. But then I found out I was dying. Finally! You've only been hiding this from your best friend while pumping yourself full of pills while working with him. In light of everything going on with Brianna being missing, a good friend would have done the same thing Steve did though. 
As the two of them continue to discuss how things could be different and better, Steve mentions that there's something else he has to do. That's why he's put his treatments on hold. When they go to see Steve's family in the graveyard, Steve shows Dennis the footage of his experiments, and Dennis can't believe what he's seeing. Steve wastes no time though, and he asks Dennis where he thinks Brianna could have possibly gone. Well, this doesn't bode well for Brianna. Of all the times that he's gone back to, this is the worst one to have her go back to. As Steve runs from the gunfire, he falls into a trench of dead bodies and he starts to call out for Brianna. This girl has been gone for roughly two weeks. Why on earth would she still be chilling around the dead bodies in cannon fire? Hello? Why is she still there? Has she just been sitting in this dead body trench for weeks? Steve gives Brianna his last pill and tells her it's time to go home. As she takes the pill, she realizes that Steve doesn't have a way to get back now that he's wounded. He checks his watch and says that he has plenty of time. As they hobble towards where the boulder was, a strange figure comes whistling through the mist. A looter appears and points his gun at Steve, who gets down to the ground and lures the man towards him. Ah! Oh snap, that's one of the best parts of the movie. Such a random coincidence, but hopefully it was just in time for him to make it. As Steve tries to get to the boulder, his watch timer goes off, signifying that his time is up. This is almost as touching as watching Hawking fade away. Almost. Either way, we knew this story wasn't going to end all sunshine and rainbows. The man had terminal cancer for crying out loud. And with that, the credits start to roll. For a film that was not advertised correctly, it really did give you a sense of dread and mystery throughout the film. The tension of everything going wrong on so many different fronts made one simple win feel like we just finished a marathon. And you can't argue with the acting in this film either. Anthony and Jamie did a phenomenal job. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos if you like this one. Drop a comment down below of what movie you'd like me to watch next and I'll see you in the next video.